I absolutely went into marriage knowing I was going to become a divorcee. There was no question in my mind. I knew at some point we would get divorced. The only question mark was when. I thought... This woman is insane. She purposely jumped into a marriage contract with a man knowing full well she wasn't going to stay committed. Marriage is just a failed technology and people just have to accept it for what it is. If the rate of it failing is 65%, which by the way, it should be higher. I'm not comfortable. In fact, I've like tried really hard to be attracted to men who like treat me well. <laughs> it's boring. I am literally still in shock that my husband just came home from work one day and decided that he's going to up and leave the family. But here we are. My soon to be ex-husband. My soon to be ex-husband. My soon to be ex-husband. Well, since my husband... Kindly subscribe to the channel, as it is our sole form of support. Thank you. I absolutely went into marriage knowing I was going to become a divorcee. There was no question in my mind. I knew at some point we would get divorced. The only question mark was when. I thought, you know, when I'm 40, maybe I'd get that title. Maybe then I'd earn to, you know, 10 years down the track. Because I think 10 years in a marriage, that's a pretty good innings in this day and age. That's like a good run. Turns out it was just the three. Uh, in the end, that's all we kind of uh, reached our limit with. But, you know, still got the title in the end. And obviously, I don't want to get married ever again. However, double divorce is a term that I'm living for. Like, that is cunt, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm a double divorce. What? That's Slayana. Almost would be worth getting married again for. Um, but as I said, I'm not going to get married again unless it's someone with terrible health, um, no living other relatives and a lot of money, <laughs> in which case inquire within. Why even get married? This makes no sense at all. I also knew I was going to get divorced before I got married. What is the motivation to get married if you believe divorce is inevitable? Girl, I was 24 and divorced just shy of five years of marriage. I knew from the minute I signed the paper. Married again to someone who I know I wouldn't divorced. We're all wondering the same thing here. Why get married if you had planned to get a divorce in the first place? What this woman did is truly evil. She intentionally wasted that man's time, leading him on to believe he'd found the love of his life. It's frustrating to think about the level of deception involved here. This wasn't just a case of a relationship not working out. It was calculated from the start. This woman entered the marriage fully aware that she was stringing him along with no intention of making it last. She already knew the marriage wouldn't work out. But what's really not surprising is the women in the comments relating to this woman saying they've done the same thing, entering into a marriage contract knowing full well they have no plan on being committed to the marriage, only to file for divorce later. It's honestly appalling to see people treat marriage like a temporary fix, a phase or a convenient status upgrade they can abandon at will. They walk away as if it's no big deal, leaving the other person crushed, financially drained, and questioning whether they can ever trust anyone again. Now, this is her viewpoint on marriage. Marriage is just a failed technology and people just have to accept it for what it is. If the rate of it failing is 65%, which, by the way, it should be higher because it's probably like 25% of people who would have got divorced and should have got divorced but stayed together for the kids, right? So that leaves maybe 10% of marriages that are actually happily married, right? Maybe, all right? Apply that to anything else, you wouldn't do it. If it was surgery, and they said, there's a 65% chance you're going to die, 25% chance you'll survive but be seriously injured, or 10% chance it works. Would you do it? No, you wouldn't. If it was a plane and they said 65% chance of a crash, 20% chance of an emergency landing, 10% chance you'll make it, would you do it? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't buy an iPhone if there was a 10% chance of it working. What are you talking about? Stop defending marriage. It doesn't work, babe. Well, she completely dodged the question. No surprises there. The question was simple. Why did you get married? Madam, nobody asked you for statistics or percentages of failed marriages. While it's true that marriage is struggling today, she's done nothing but contribute to that decline. 
Instead of taking accountability for her own actions, she's deflecting. She's talking about marriage as a broad concept, skirting around the real issue, her own choices and how she led that man on, wasting his time and energy. This is a prime example of someone who wanted the wedding but didn't want the marriage. She probably went all in for the ceremony, the vows, and the image of a happily married couple. But when it came down to commitment, she had one foot in and one foot out the entire time. This woman just wanted the title of a wife, but not to actually be a wife. So let me get this straight. You really went into a marriage knowing damn well you didn't want to marry this man. You didn't think it was going to be long term and you still sat up at the altar and said, I do. And you don't think that that's disgusting behavior to lie to somebody, to manipulate somebody, to look them in the eyes and say forever and not mean it. And the amount of women in her comment section that are basically saying that they're in the same situation and they're waiting until the 10 year mark to get whatever they can out of their husbands, which means they're lying to their husbands every single day for however many years. And then you expect it to play this long game, expecting it to last 10 years, even though it only lasted three, which means you'd be lying to him for the next 10 years and you don't see that as a problem. In fact, you think it's funny, like it's a flex that you're gonna be a double divorcee. And just imagine for a moment, a man came on this app and spewed all this nonsense about using his wife just for the title. Let's be so for real, we all know how this goes. These women get on the dating scene and they get treated the exact same way that they treated the men in their relationships or in their marriages, and they can't handle it. And then they get online and cry, where did all the good men go, even though they're basically breaking down and destroying all of the good men in the process. So they just perpetuate the same f***ing toxic cycle and then blame all men. Like, since when is it cute to basically become an escort if you're marrying a man for money? Some of y'all need to stop using men and marriages as an ego boost and just get yourself into therapy, but don't cry about all the men that don't want you, want nothing to do with you. And when you find a good man and he doesn't want you because you've been ran through, I don't want to hear any shit about all men are trash if you're perpetuating the cycle to creating all the men that are essentially trash by treating them like shit in the first place. Okay, bye. And they wonder why men don't want to get married anymore. It's less about ego boosts and more about acquiring assets and a second residual income. Happened to me too. My ex-wife said she was bored and wanted to live her best life. My ex-wife used me to raise our kids and then as soon as they were grown, she found someone else and left me. 15 years for nothing and now my life is over. That's absolutely correct. Women like this always end up regretting their decisions much later on in life. Overall, this is emotional and psychological domestic abuse. It's not just a bad decision or a failed relationship. It's a deeply damaging betrayal. By pretending to be committed, she manipulated him into believing in a future together, drawing him in with false promises and expectations. This kind of manipulation messes with a person's emotional stability, making them question their own judgment, trust, and even their self-worth. Now, let's take a look at Larissa. This woman is Larissa, and Larissa is a very annoying wife that caused her husband to divorce her. I am literally still in shock that my husband just came home from work one day and decided that he's going to up and leave the family and has left me in a position where I have to find a way to save my house. But here we are. Even after her divorce, she has become obsessed with making TikToks about him, bashing him. Talk all the shit you want about my husband abandoning me, that he got out at the right time. So you've got a toxic mid-ass man in your house and you need him to leave. My soon-to-be ex-husband. My soon-to-be ex-husband. My soon-to-be ex-husband. Well, since my husband. There's an obsession there indeed. But that man wanted peace and he finally got out. I am literally still in shock that my husband just came home from work one day and decided that he is going to up and leave the family and has left me in a position where I have to find a way to save my house. But here we are, I'm going to tell you the story, but here's the deal, I am in the creator fund. And if 35 million people watch this, TikTok will pay to save my house. I know that's ambitious. You've already watched long enough, but if we can get a large amount of views, I can figure something out, okay? Here's the deal. My husband comes home from work one day 
and says, I don't really like you anymore. I'm not happy here. I need to leave. And we have our conversation and it basically ends with, don't stay if you don't like me. That's not something that's going to change because I'm not changing, right? <laughs> but if this is something that can be figured out, if it's because of other things that are happening that could maybe be shifted, then let's talk about it. Let's try and work it out. He says, okay, we'll try and work it out, but he's going to Nashville on a work trip the next day. So that really gives it a couple of days to simmer, right? Well, wild twist of fate, his dad also ends up being on a work trip in Nashville, something that he didn't even know about until he was already there. They don't work for the same company. It was just this wild twist of fate. After he talks to his dad, I don't hear from him at all the rest of that trip. We had been talking before that. He had called me a couple of times and then radio silence, not even a text. Comes home and basically just says, okay, well, I'm leaving. I can't stay here. I don't want to be here. So not much I can do about that, right? <laughs> it has been less than two weeks. He has already rented an apartment and he is moving out tomorrow. Like I am looking at his boxes over there that are waiting for him to grab tomorrow. So I would love to keep my house. I have 200 pound dogs that were really his, but I'm keeping them because he works 12 hour days. And... <laughs> At this point, yes, I'm desperate. If you want to hear more, I did block his ass, so I will talk more about it. <laughs> now you're probably feeling sorry for her, but don't. Basically, the reason why her husband is divorcing her is because he was very unhappy in the marriage. What makes it even more crazy is the fact that she knew about it, but continued to neglect him. So again, because he was unhappy, he decided to leave. Now what she's doing is trying to build herself a career on TikTok by telling everyone about her failed marriage. Take a look. There definitely were signs that my soon-to-be ex-husband who decided he wanted to leave and then skipped out within 24 hours was unhappy, but I rightfully misinterpreted them because as this is all happening, his mom is on her way to spirit. And things started to get a little rocky in February, and that was when he found out that his mom was on her way out of this lifetime. As it stands right now, right about when he decided to up and skip out of the house, she's got like a month left on this earth. So of course I thought he was just processing the grief of losing a parent because that is a lot of grief and absolutely changes you. But apparently it was also that he was unhappy with me. Maybe I wasn't able to support him quite in the way he needed to be supported in that time. And you know, that's not entirely my job either. It would have been my job to help him but if he really needed somebody, we could have found him a therapist. The problem is he never really communicated what was going on. So for me, I thought he was just disassociated because of the parent. Even if all of this is simply a byproduct of that grief, it does not excuse the behavior and it does not mean if he processes through this and realizes that he fucked up, that he has any chance of coming back. There's always three sides of the story. There's her side, his side, and the truth. Now I do agree that the man should have tried to communicate what he was going through, but I can only assume he didn't because something may have happened in the past when he tried to. Or else, why would he hesitate to communicate how he feels or what he's going through when he's been married to her for such a long time? Typically, when a man communicates how he feels, it's not really something women handle very well. Their outlook on you can change. But what bothers me is the fact that she stated that there were signs of him being unhappy and she still refuses to act on those signs, basically ignoring him, knowing that he was grieving. She also stated that it wasn't her job and suggest a therapist would handle it better there's only so much a therapist can do. Sometimes your spouse needs you to be there. Her job has shifted from being a wife to bash on her ex-husband, making it seem like he abandoned her. Talk all the shit you want about my husband abandoning me, that he got out at the right time or that he won, but let's not forget who's still sitting in the house, living their best life as some 
bitch on the internet that you are actively supporting while he's at work right now trying to make money for a truck payment. Seriously, hate all you want, but I still rolled out of bed at 10.30 this morning while y'all were busy making my mortgage payment for me. I literally don't know anything about what's going on on his side of this situation because I'm not telling his story, I'm telling mine. But trust me when I say things aren't looking pretty for him right now. My husband left no house, no payout for the house because of the way he left things, he was not granted one. He liquidated his retirement savings, so now he has no retirement savings either. And now he's living in an apartment with a truck he can barely afford. I have nothing wrong with people who live in apartments. I do have a lot wrong with people who live in apartments driving an expensive car because you literally chose a liability over an asset and and that's fucking stupid. My ex-husband literally left with nothing and left me everything. And now y'all are saying he won because he bought himself a truck. <laughs> Not everything is that black and white. He bought himself a little bit of dopamine that'll last him like a week before he goes back to his miserable self that left the house. But please keep hating, cause you know what? Y'all are paying my mortgage and I love that for me. It doesn't seem like she's living her best life at all. If you're getting upset over other people's comments, then you aren't truly living your best life. If you were, you wouldn't need to convince anyone. It would naturally show through your actions. She doesn't realize that her ex-husband won by leaving her, mainly because of her insufferable character and behavior. He's no longer stuck with her, likely because her true colors, her red flags, became glaringly obvious during the marriage. I wonder how he missed all the warning signs initially. She also stated that the husband abandoned her. To me, it just seems like he made the right choice to choose peace over misery. Now after he divorced her, apparently she started giving women terrible advice on how to leave their man and becoming a mirror instead of communicating. So you've got a toxic mid-ass man in your house and you need him to leave. Now I did not purposefully get rid of my husband, but I do know exactly what happened that made him leave. So allow me to share it with you. We're gonna match their energy, okay? If they don't clean up after you, you're not cleaning up after them. If they are not putting in the effort to have an emotional relationship and meet your emotional needs, you are not going to put in the effort to meet their emotional needs and have an emotional relationship. Same goes with an intimate physical relationship. If they have been treating you like crap all week, then no, do not just sleep with them because you think that you have to because they live here, you don't. I promise you, if you stop acting like a mommy they can fuck and start matching their energy and being just as big of a deadbeat as they are, they're gonna up and skip out because what they married you for, what they're with you for is a mommy that they can fuck. I certainly did not get into a partnership to take care of a grown ass child. So when I stopped treating him like a child and started treating him like the adult that he was, things started to go south pretty quick. Oh, we just love the bashing. This woman is obviously hurt about how her marriage ended, but she said she knew what made him leave. So why didn't she act on it? Why let it come to an end? Now, she's telling women to match their spouse's energy instead of trying to improve the relationship. If you're just matching someone's energy, it creates more toxicity and leads to separation. Relationships need communication and mutual effort, not playing tit for tat. By advising others to mirror their partner's behavior, she's promoting negativity instead of understanding and growth. Her approach shows a lack of accountability and introspection, which are essential for resolving conflicts and building a healthy relationship. It's concerning to see her channel her pain into harmful advice. Instead of advocating for positive change and healing, she's spreading a mindset that leads to more division and heartache. Relationships require patience, empathy, and the willingness to work through issues together. Without these, any partnership becomes shaky. My soon-to-be ex-husband just pulled up to my house in a brand new truck, and I'm not really sure if I'm sad about it or if I'm mad about it. There's a little bit of both happening there because a brand new truck 
really mattered more to this man than his marriage and his dog. Which, I mean, if he wants to be the loser that lives in an apartment with a brand new car, then by all means, be my guest. All he's doing is showing me that he really was a financial burden on me and that I should not keep him around. One of the most consistent arguments we had was that he wanted a brand new $100,000 truck. And trust me when I say we are not in the tax bracket to be having a $100,000 truck, nor does he have a real use for that car, especially now that he lives in an apartment? The car that he has been driving up until this point is my car. He didn't own a car when he decided to up and skip out, and I was nice enough to let him borrow my car, which you know what? I shouldn't have been, and I should have just left him stranded, apparently, since I guess a truck was more important than his wife, but I guess now I get my car back. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm borrowing one for my parents. I don't know if I'm just gonna keep that one and get rid of it, but I've had a car because my parents are supportive, and his parents like to skip money out of him. Oh man, I really wonder how she manages to make these videos and still post them. And I'm pretty sure if that man was a loser, he wouldn't be able to afford a brand new truck worth $100,000. I guess she finally took off the mask and showed her true colors. Now that they're no longer together, she's using every bit of ammunition she has, dragging him down while she lashes out at the world. It's clear she's only trying to drag this man down because she needs the money to help pay off her house. So, in her world, anything goes. Her actions reveal a lot about her character, showing she's willing to say or do anything to get what she wants, regardless of the consequences. Instead of moving on and finding ways to heal, she's stuck in a cycle of bitterness and revenge. This reflects on her poorly. My soon-to-be ex-husband told me he wanted to leave and then basically skipped out of the house within 24 hours. He was here today doing some repairs because I'm not signing any divorce documents until he puts my basement back in order because like, there's a lot of stuff that he has broken over the last six-ish months because like that's where his man cave was and also he painted the ceiling of his man cave green and like he's not leaving me with that project, right? So he was here and we were talking about some of the stuff that's just left in the house that I don't know what to do with to see if he wants to take it because I don't have a basement anymore, right? I'm renting that out. And he asked if he could take, let me show you. He asked if he could take these two stuffed animals, which we got on a trip to Disneyland like five or six years ago. He won me this Wally, -E, and then this we got because our dog's name is Doug, like Doug from Up, right? So he asked if he could have them both, and I was like, honestly, I was just gonna donate them, like you're kind of fucking me over. I don't really want anything from this relationship, right? And it just feels like a weird thing to want from a relationship that you were apparently so unhappy in that you didn't want to talk to me about your problems, you didn't want to try and fix it, and you up and skipped out of the house within 24 hours. I am just so confused because he really wanted them and I really was just gonna donate them. So I really don't understand any of this, any of it at all. Like, why would you want something from a memory that we made five or six years ago when you apparently didn't enjoy this relationship? Because my almost ex-husband straight up did just abandon all of us. He did not even try to take his dogs. He went and got himself a third floor, one bedroom apartment with no outside space within 24 hours of telling me he wanted a divorce. Not only that, but it is not even a completed apartment complex. He is living in a active construction zone. He did not plan on taking his dogs. And he was not even planning on leaving me with the house. He was going to leave me with the dogs, sell the house, take a profit, and go ahead and skip out and let me figure it out for myself. He did not take any of us into consideration when he decided to leave. Our house is pretty big. We could have lived separately, literally never seen each other until he figured something out and he could have not abandoned me to try and figure out the mortgage and his dogs to have no place to live essentially. The other side of the divorce story is that he was simply not happy and just decided that he wanted to up and leave instead of trying to communicate any issues that he had or trying to work on it, which is the only reason that he is willing to negotiate for me to keep my house because he is quite literally a abandoning all of us. I don't really see why where he lives matters, but it sounds like this man has been trying to escape the marriage for a long time. 
He probably needed a place where he could finally find peace. It's not abandoning. It's him escaping from a situation where he was suffering in silence while she ignored all the signs. That man probably needed to get out for his own mental and emotional well-being, especially after one of his family members die while she refused to support him. He didn't abandon his family, he just left you because you wasn't fulfilling your job as a wife. This comment that keeps coming up is actually hilarious to me because we all know men don't actually value peace. In fact, my soon-to-be ex-husband actually told me that he was leaving because I had gone to therapy, I had healed, I had started meditating, I found my inner peace, and I was no longer interested in living the financially reckless life that he is currently living. Because he also took a ton of credit card debt with him when he left. So I'm actually sitting in a much better financial situation than I was with his ass. He definitely did not leave for peace. He left to continue living a chaotic life. And it's hilarious to me that you all think what he got was peace. He wasn't even after peace. Men don't value peace. You men don't actually enjoy peace. You don't like peace. You like to be in a chaotic state and you like to have your nervous system super amped up all the time. Honestly, name me one man aside from Jesus or the Buddha who actually truly enjoyed peace. And even Jesus went around flipping tables. But again, y'all can believe whatever you want because because you're just some strangers on the internet, so who f cares? If she thinks that men don't actually value peace, then I'm glad that he got up and left. This also makes me wonder what kind of chaos she was causing in her marriage that drove him away so quickly. Men value many things, and I'm pretty sure peace tops that list. Her statement reveals a lack of understanding about what men want. It's clear that if he left so abruptly, there must have been significant turmoil and unrest. Peace is a fundamental need for anyone, and if she failed to provide that, it's no surprise he went another way. Her lack of insight into this crucial aspect of relationships only highlights why the marriage ended. She seems to be out of touch with the basic requirements for a healthy partnership, which includes respect, calm, and mutual understanding.